The world of images has changed. We are surrounded by them. We create them. We use them to remember, to laugh at, to show the world a smile, a friend. We create frozen instances in movement, in everyday life, and particularly within the sciences. Images have opened up new vistas, new possibilities, and have changed our view of ourselves and the world around us. I think that without x-rays, uh, medicine would be crippled. Medicine would really not be possible to, to do at the level we do it today. Diagnosis would be impossible in many diseases and uh, also treatments would be impossible. To me it feels like we would be back in the, in the sort of early days of the 20th century and uh, people were still struggling with the primitive means to discover the structure of complicated macromolecules and organic molecules. In the world of science, the use of images has paved the way for some of our most remarkable discoveries. Imaging refers to fields of science like X-ray crystallography, electron microscopy and MRI. Here, images are not only used to share information among scientists, images also reveal fundamental scientific truths. Scientists are now looking into and gradually understanding worlds far beyond our sensory capacities. We now have the possibilities of looking into the body or into the dances of life, into DNA and beyond. This development has been slow and arduous, with failures, hope and success paving the way. Let's start this brief history where some of us end up occasionally. In the hospital. The discovery of the x-rays was a, a revolution in medicine. For the first time it was possible to view tissue uh, indirectly without having to, to uh, open the body and uh, for uh, and in the beginning of course it was uh, used for uh, uh, for diagnosing fractures and uh, and for simple kinds of treatments but uh, it actually quite soon was used for imaging soft tissue like the lungs and then the computer revolution has uh, increased uh, the number of calculations that we can do and increased the quality of the images. But uh, the real revolution was actually the computerized tomography. A very different technique, but one that provides a similar view of ourselves, is MRI. Magnetic resonance imaging, or, or MRI, is um, a superior tool when it comes to, to discriminating soft tissue. It requires experience and it requires training to look at these images. And uh, some people can become extremely skilled. It's, uh, it's like an art when you can... Uh, some people become very good artists and they can see and look at the images and, and find minute changes that can actually change the life of a patient. Within months of Röntgen's discovery of x-rays, physicians were using them in the clinic. It took a few more years for scientists to realize that x-rays could also help basic research. The x in x-rays refers to the mathematical term for something unknown. In the beginning of the 20th century, some guessed that x-rays were a wave with a wavelength shorter than light. The difficulty was to actually prove this. Here's how it was done. Any wave that passes around or through an object will bend because it is deflected by the object. So when you shine a laser beam through an ordinary stocking, you see this scattered diffraction pattern. This pattern is only seen if the width of the slits, or in this case, the regular pattern between the nylon threads, is close to the size of the wavelength. Crystals have a regular lattice-like structure, which is so small that it will only create a diffraction pattern if you shoot X-rays through it. The first to discover this was German scientist Max von Laue. When he passed X-rays through a crystal of ordinary table salt, he created a diffraction pattern. This proved X-rays are waves, but it also revealed information about the crystal. 
Building on these results, the father and son team of William and Lawrence Bragg used mathematical models to work out how these patterns could determine the structure of crystals, flinging open the door to crystallography. In the early days of X-ray diffraction or X-ray crystallography, there were rather sort of primitive approaches to how one would interpret the diffraction pattern in terms of structures. But I think the field attracted a large number of extremely brilliant, mathematically oriented scientists who refined and further developed the techniques to go from a diffraction pattern to a electron density map of what was in the crystal they were studying and from that into the atomic positions in great detail. The big hurdle was how to crystallize large and complex proteins, allowing us to determine the structure of the building blocks of living organisms, including ourselves. When it comes to interpreting images from complex data, some people are more gifted than others. Like Dorothy Hodgkin, who determined the structure of penicillin. This knowledge made it possible to produce penicillin synthetically, saving countless lives. There was a sense of déjà vu a few years later when the race was on to discover the structure of DNA, the molecule that carries our genetic code. Although researchers could see DNA's diffraction pattern, the structure was hiding, misinterpreted. Finally, Watson and Crick managed to see what others had missed. The contribution of imaging to science and medicine has been tremendous. Within medicine, X-rays, CT scans, and MRI are used together to treat illness. And in science, X-ray crystallography and NMR both identify structures that show us new worlds. So, where can we hope for a new breakthrough? Well, first of all, I think one should not denigrate in any way the small steps of improvement. But one thing which is not far away, actually, is, is an X-ray laser. Because what X-ray diffraction methods today are very good at is to, to take a sort of static picture of a molecule. But it would be very, very interesting also to follow a chemical reaction going on in sort of real time, to follow how atoms move together and so forth, kind of a, a choreography in, 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 in the atomic world. Sort of. That is maybe not far away. It's easy to focus on the big steps of science, on the peaks in a vast landscape, to see the broad brush of history and forget the thousands of little steps without which scientific progress cannot be made. Like molecules longing to attach, or rather the way they embrace, so must patience, technology, the team, all come together with those wonderful qualities most of us possess as children but that some of us seem to forget. Creativity, curiosity, and an open mind.